Hi, and welcome to the third video of three videos for section 1.3. I'm going to look at another example. Uh, again, it's a piecewise function. If I have any electrical engineers watching the videos, you may recognize this function. But we want to find the limit as t goes to zero of the function h of t. And that's if we have the following, h of t is equal to 0 if t is less than or equal to 0, and it's equal to 1 if t is greater than 0. So this 0 and 1 is talking about like current. That's why I sort of reference the electrical engineers there. If up until time 0, there's no current running through a system, we say that that value is zero. And then as soon as, let's say, a light switch is turned on, there's current, it jumps up to positive one. So it doesn't fluctuate back and forth. It's basically off or on, like a light switch. So let's look at what does this thing look like from a graph point perspective. So my function value is equal to zero if t is less than or equal to zero. So that means what? That means I'm down here on the x-axis up into zero and including zero. So it gets the filled in circle there. But then, as soon as I, let's say, turn on that light switch, it jumps up to a value of one, but it's not included. t is only is, uh, strictly greater than zero, so that gets the open circle headed up to positive infinity, as long as I leave the light switch on. So, let's look at this, not really crunching values, there's no values to crunch here, we don't have t's within the function, it's either zero or one, but as I approach from the left, so as t gets closer to zero, I'm gonna put a little negative sign up there. So that's telling me this notation, t gets closer to zero from the left. That's what that negative sign up there in the upper right is talking about. So as I'm getting closer and closer to zero from the left, what value does this approach? Well, it keeps approaching zero, right? So I'm way over here, it's zero. Here, zero, here, zero, here, zero. It's always at zero when I'm approaching zero, x is equal to zero, or t rather is equal to zero from the left hand side. How about t approaching zero from the right side? So I put a little plus there. So it doesn't necessarily, this value could be three. So three with a little plus sign means I'm approaching three from the right side or I'm approaching three from the left side. It's a little bit deceiving here because it's zero, like, oh, it must be positive and negative numbers. It doesn't reference positive or negative numbers. It's only talking about from the left of that value or from the right of that value. So as I'm way over here, what value am I getting close to? One. How about here? One. How about here? One. So as t approaches zero from the right side, the value of the function is approaching one. So what does that mean? As I'm approaching from the left, it gets closer to zero. As I'm approaching from the right, it gets closer to one. So therefore, notation, three little dots in a triangle, therefore the limit as t approaches zero does not exist. It does not go to one specific value. Remember what that formal definition said. It said that as we get closer and closer to that value, it's going to get to some value L, the limit value. And in this case, we have two different possibilities, either 0 or 1. And so if we have two different values, if we're approaching from the left or from the right, then in that case, we have no limit. It doesn't get close to any value. So this has a special name. It's called a one-sided limit.
So the limit as x approaches a from the left side of f of x is some value l. So in this case, the limit as t approach 0 from the left side is equal to 0. This 0 is our capital L. Or if it's a right-handed limit, again, just one side, same idea, the limit as x approaches a from the right side, the little plus of f of x is equal to some value L. So in this case, as, zero approach, as t approach 0 from the right side, our value L, the limit that it went towards, was equal to 1. So that gives us the following, which is ultra important. So therefore, the limit as x approaches a of some function f of x is equal to L if and only if, and again in an earlier video I sort of use this shorthand notation, IFF. So the limit as x approaches a of some function is equal to a value l if and only if the limit as x approaches a from the left side of the function is the exact same as the limit as x approaches a from the right side of that function. So go back to one of the first examples we looked at in uh, video two. We had the, the curve and the point didn't exist at one, but they both, whether it came from the left or whether it came from the right, they both approached what? They both approached 0.5. Or like the sine function example we had. They both approached what? They both approached one. So as long as the, if these two values are equal, then that's the limit as x approaches a. If they're different, then we don't have a limit. It doesn't exist. It is a one-sided limit. So given that, let's try this one. Find the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared if it exists. So go ahead, I'll pause here for a second. You can pause the video if you'd like. It's probably a better option. Uh, figure this, try to figure this out. Does this one have a limit? The easiest way, obviously we can't plug in zero because that gives us a zero in the denominator. So try this one-sided limit test. What's our value as we approach x from the negative side? What's our values as we approach the limit from the right-hand side, are they the same? So go ahead and pause it if you want. Come on back and I'll explain it to you. All right, welcome back. So there's two ways you can do this. You can graph it, if you're good at graphing. The second is plotting points. If we were to graph this, we are going to get a graph that looks Something like that. So as I approach 0 from the left hand side, where is it going? It's going up to positive infinity. It's not going to any specific number. As I approach from the right hand side, where am I going? It's going again up to positive infinity. It's not going to any specific value. So because I cannot say, oh, this is equal to 1, or this is equal to 0, or this is equal to some specific value, because it's just going to infinity, we say that the limit does not exist. It doesn't have a value that it goes to, because they're both going to go to infinity. They never actually come to a certain value. All right, just a couple of sort of last points here before this video ends. So the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, got some water. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> if I had better video skills, I'd probably edit that part now, but I don't, so you'll have to just watch me drink a little water there. 
Uh, a couple things. First, uh, the definition that I gave you guys, so that's appropriate to understand the concept of limits. If you want a very formal, a very proven uh, definition on page 31 of the book, it has a precise definition as well as the proofs that go along with it. I've tutored a couple people from Math 181 and other than just sort of talking about it briefly, the instructors never went too much into depth with the proofs. Uh, you're talking about some epsilons and deltas, things of that nature. Uh, if for some reason your instructor does delve deeply into that, um, perhaps you know we can meet one on one, or um, you know if you want to meet with them in office hours, maybe they can help you out a little bit. I'm not going to go into it too deeply. Um, truthfully, it's you know almost higher math than 181, I suppose, but it is in the book. It you know does talk about the uh, you know the precise definition and the proof of it. Uh, so again, I won't go into it too much, but uh, hopefully. You know, if you need help on it, you can find some arrangements there. That was the end of video three. Uh, come on back and we will look at section 1.4.